Welcome to today's episode. I'm here with Luxana, a singer and artist that I can ask some questions to. I'm Verena and this is the Voices and Routines podcast. Let's go. Hello and welcome. Hello. Thank you for being here. How are you today? Thank you. I'm good. Thank you. How are you? I'm good. Well, let's pretend that we didn't talk for like an hour up there. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> so my first question to you is, uh -huh. um, what is your favorite go-to karaoke song? Well, I would say all the Adele songs. I'm really a fan of her and yeah, any song of her would be fine. <laughs> okay, nice. So you love to go all out with your voice. Yes, yes. Yeah, I love, I just love her and her songs. And yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I heard someone told me you were a singer. <laughs> yes, I am. Um, I'm an opera singer, actually. So cool. Very nice. Yes. Um, yeah, I studied in, um, in the US, in New York City. Um, I graduated from there, from uh, the Bachelor of Classical Music, mm -hmm. opera singer. And yeah, here I am now in Vienna. <laughs> That's so nice. Oh, I have so many questions to ask you, but so how did you come to New York City? Where? So basically, yeah, I started in, um, I'm from a small town, if small, right? Because it's not really small <laughs> <laughs> in, in Mexico. It's called Leon, Guanajuato. And from there, I transitioned to Mexico City uh, mm -hmm. in the conservatory from there. And there, I, and then I auditioned for Manhattan School of Music mm -hmm. and I got in nice. with this amazing teacher, Mignon Dunn, which is a really good mezzo-sopran. And yeah, so I did study there, finished my studies and came here after. That is so cool. So how old were you when you, go to, when you went to Mexico City? Oh, I think I was like 19. 19 so. Okay. Mm -hmm. And before that, you took lessons in your town? Uh, yes, I took a couple of lessons, but actually my story is a little bit funny because I used to study also as an artist, a mm -hmm. painter, and then I studied the music um, because nobody really in my family sings or anything. Mm -hmm. I'm the only weirdo that just decided, <laughs> hey, I'm going to sing. <laughs> And they were like, oh, okay, <laughs> what should we do? So everybody's just busy painting. You're like, oh. yes, exactly. <laughs> okay, okay. So then, yeah, I started um, singing a lot. And since I was a little girl, I mm -hmm. sang everything in Disney, everything. Uh, and yeah, so that's, well, that's so cool. Mm -hmm. Nice. So you were <laughs> also an artist, an artist from the beginning? From the beginning. And oh, then okay. I switched later okay. on. Mm -hmm. So you also took artist lesson is it artist lessons do you take artist lessons yeah if I don't that's know. how you say it <laughs> it's either that or your mom not knowing what to do with when you were little and just oh, okay. like putting you into any just like lessons so <laughs> she gets rid of You're you occupied, yeah. yeah 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 just do something <laughs> go, go, <away>. go paint <laughs> don't sing in my house go paint yes <laughs> exactly okay, okay. so did you do uh painting as well while you were in mexico city and then new york or was it at that time just singing in mexico city i did i did some painting projects um i did some uh stages for some operas i designed the like i did cendrillon which mm -hmm. is cinderella and i did like the background and i painted like the you know the oh. sets and everything it was really fun i really loved wow. it uh but right now i have more um modern ideas on mind that I okay. hope to put soon in my stage. Yeah. Okay, okay, mm -hmm. very nice. What kind of modern? Well, I just have this uh, crazy idea of putting like a huge head in the stage um, and then just make it open. I, I just have okay. some ideas. Okay, okay. <laughs> yeah. Wow, okay, nice. How do you remember them? How do you save them? Do you like draw them somewhere or do you write about them? No, or it's do you just keep weird. them? I keep them. Really? Yes. I would forget about them. And then I will just do it. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Damn, yeah. damn. Wow. <laughs> so nice. Okay, so then from New York City, you came to Vienna. How did you come here? So uh, a couple of summers ago, I sang an opera here. Mm -hmm. A couple of I'm, summers, I love that. It's very right. novel. <laughs> no, <novel -ly. laughs> yes. And I met some amazing teachers. I think that here in Vienna, 
Uh, you guys have incredible people, musicians that have really good knowledge of the music. And I do need some help with, uh, especially like romanticism, classism, mm. like all of these things, they need specific um how do you say rules that mm -hmm. you have to follow in order to sing especially in the opera business okay. so in here there are many people that can help guide you through that music and i think it's just amazing since the first time i came here i thought it was great to have in every corner you have music doesn't okay. matter but you have music and i really like that since the beginning okay okay but do we have a lot of classical music here yes like a lot a lot much more than in my country of okay, course okay. a lot yes <laughs> in every corner okay so you have more possibilities to do classical music here and... exactly okay okay nice it's nice that's nice so what would be a different in like a difference in singing um baroque or romanticist a difference pieces? it's just, just that it's different it's just very different it's very hard like it's uh, the phrasing the way mm. you sing it like in romanticism you have more freedom if you can say you can do like if you do one note you can do like a glissando which means you do mm -hmm. like like that mm -hmm. but in like classical like mozart you cannot do that it's you have to do very la, but you cannot mm -hmm. and but you have to keep the legato and you have to keep a lot of rules from mozart okay, you have to wow. follow yeah okay okay mm -hmm. nice so what was the first piece or opera you did in vienna I did uh, Le Noce di Figaro. Ooh. Yes, it was really fun. Um, nice. I did Contessa. I used to be a sopran, but right now I'm a mezzo sopran, so it's which means the range, vocal range, mm -hmm. is a little bit lower. Mm -hmm. So is it, is it you, you? You're just like I'm singing lower now. Yeah, exactly. I think I just okay. did <laughs> basically not not because just I wanted to because, but it was also because my my instrument allow it so it means that my low voice it's uh in strong enough to be heard from mm -hmm, mm -hmm. far okay so. okay true because the higher voices are heard better right or like higher tones it, and lower i mean it depends how they're singing it it mm -hmm. depends on a lot of things but okay. usually high notes are louder okay. yes so you have to have a lower voice to be able to be heard in the middle range, especially like mm -hmm. for women. It's okay, yeah. Okay. Nice. Mm -hmm. So how about languages? Languages. Yeah. <laughs> do you have to sing in German here or Italian? Yes, I do sing in German, Italian, uh, French, Spanish, Russian, uh, like any language that the opera just gives mm -hmm. because um, as an opera singer you have to be able to sing in uh, in a lot of languages mm -hmm. feeling the text and knowing what you're saying so okay. yeah i have to sing in but do you know all of those languages like very well or do you just like see the text and then you you look at the text see what the meaning is no, actually yeah. there is a thing called um ipa international phonetic uh, alphabet which is a specific alphabet that helps you understand the rules of the languages. Mm -hmm. So if, for example, if you're singing in English, it's the hardest one for like, by the way, to sing in opera. Um, really? Yes, you have to follow certain rules. And mm -hmm. if you're singing an American English or if you're singing a British English, then you have to do follow mm -hmm. these rules that this IPA language shows you. Also for the German. Mm -hmm. Uh, if you're singing this or that, you have this, um, how do you, it's like, um, letters that you already know how to pronunciate it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Is it like this, um, upside down E and A stuff? Exactly. Okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, these yeah. things, or they put like dots on top or like mm -hmm. marks on top. Mm -hmm. So, you okay, know, okay. like nasal, like, ah, uh. you would do like this, like a curve, mm -hmm. which means it's nasal. Like for example, okay. in French, it would be, ah. Uh, you okay, so okay. yeah so so you can see any language there with this phonetic writing and uh -huh. you're like i know exactly how to pronounce it exactly wow Sorry. 
Okay. Yes. I always wondered how people like at the opera, at, at the musical do it. Yeah. <laughs> Singing in another language. Yeah, it's this with a lot of rules. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So cool. Nice. So, and then, well, back to your art, like the, mm -hmm. the painting art. Yeah. How are you doing it in Vienna? What, what are you working on here? So right now, actually, um, this is going to be my first artistic show because I never really have done here in Vienna um, uh, an art piece that I would love to do. Mm -hmm. I'm very excited to show it. Uh, but I did in Mexico many times in the U.S. as well, as I already. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so that's <laughs> that's my first. It will be my first one. Nice. Really nice. Okay, so let me just see what I have here for you. Um, okay, would you take me through what like the creation process of an art piece or like um, either like drawing, painting or singing? Like where do you start if you get something or get an idea or you get a piece to sing? Like how do you start working on it and then where, where do you go when do you know that it's done? I think that sometimes it works when your brain just shows an image and you have to do it. You feel like, oh, I have to do this. Like, I already have the inspiration. I have to do it. This time it was a little different because I had the emotion mm -hmm. and I had to make that emotion be physical. So... Um, because it's a really big emotion. Mm -hmm. I, I I already know and I'm thinking on how to do it on, on you know, like a sculpture. Mm -hmm. Because my idea is uh, I'm working on a sculpture right now. So, and put it together with the music. Mm -hmm. So I want to marry these two arts and, and be able to do a performance mm -hmm. With this big emotion that I, I'm telling you. Very nice. Okay. Can I ask what emotion it is? Or is that a secret? No, no, it's okay. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> no. Um, because usually the uh, about death, talking about mm -hmm. death and all of these, it's a strong thing that we all humans have to go through with our families, with a loved one. And when I was back in Mexico, I, I experienced some near-death experiences mm -hmm. with family family, and also that experiences with other members of the family that were very, to just come to you and change your life completely. Mm -hmm. It's like you never know any second, like you could. Mm -hmm. But in Mexico, they have this idea of Dia de Muertos, That is, they look at death as also something to celebrate. Like you remember your loved one with colors. You remember your loved one with their favorite food, with making a party, with making these beautiful things in mm -hmm. this day. So I really want to use this sadness and grave and all this feelings that you go through when mm -hmm. you lose someone and put it and they do this transition into the colorful side into their newborn because somehow when you lose someone you also a part of you dies as well but then you reborn as a different one you see so like mm -hmm. kind of like a phoenix or that's how i, I would mm -hmm. explain it oh that's really beautiful it's a very beautiful picture because i think here it's mostly like You're sad, you were black, you go to a funeral, you're just very unhappy, you're so sad, you cry, it's, you lost somebody. But looking at the good side and being happy that you were able to meet this person and to have this person in your life is so much better and so much more beautiful. And mm. it is a cause to celebrate. Okay, cool. So you do take a lot of your culture as well into your art. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Is it the same with singing? Do you have like any any way to bring your culture in, like something from Mexico maybe, into your art of singing? Of course, yeah. There there are many um, Spanish classical music that I, mm -hmm. I do sing. Also, there are many popular songs that I sing as well, because it's uh, that this is what I love about music. Like even when I hear an aria in German, sometimes I just don't understand anything. <laughs> Or right now I understand some words, but 
you don't have to understand it to feel it. Okay. You already yeah. know what it's about. Mm. So yes, there are many music, like there is a lot of music in Spanish that also gives you this, like you don't know what they're singing, but you feel it. Mm -hmm. So that's basically my what I will try to do, <laughs> hopefully. So beautiful. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's when, when you as a listener, you get goosebumps everywhere and you're like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I was that. Very <laughs> nice. Okay, okay. So how do you cope with challenges or setbacks or when you maybe hit a point where you don't know where you, how do you go on from there and Oof. in your art? <laughs> That's a tough one. <laughs> I had, many, talk about <laughs> <laughs> I had many of those. I think yeah. every artist has. Mm -hmm. Because it's so intimate to put your feelings in your... For every artist, I think. Or I don't know, maybe I'm talking for myself. But when you put your feelings in something and you put everything into one thing mm -hmm. and then um, you receive, for example, the, in... Ex When you sing, you sing to judges, no? They have to judge you. They have mm -hmm. to say, oh, she's singing good, she's singing bad. But you're giving something so personal. Sometimes it's so hard to receive criticism from people. So sometimes when you let these voices in, it's really hard to keep going. Mm -hmm. um, and you have second thoughts and you're like, am I doing the right thing? Did I study the right thing? Mm -hmm. Should I have studied like design or something? And, and I have those thoughts a lot and I still have them sometimes. Uh, but there is nothing but art that can help you go through tough things mm -hmm. like what I told you. Um, and be able to share it with people. It's something just unexplicable like you mm -hmm. cannot explain how when you open it's like opening your chest and giving to the people mm -hmm. your heart you can receive good and bad comments of course the bad comments are gonna be really heavy on you when you're in in this area mm -hmm. but um you can either take it as that or take it as a I touched something in that person. Mm -hmm. They didn't like it. They didn't like it. That's also cool, you know? True, true. It triggered something that they didn't like. They so triggered. They like... Exactly. Okay. So I think working a lot in myself and being confident and start caring more about what I think about my things and not what other people, it's mm -hmm. been helping me just going through that path. Like, mm -hmm. this is my feelings and I give it to you. Mm -hmm. Like it or not, this is wow. it. You know, so wow. I don't know if it makes sense. Or... Oh, it does. It does. I'm okay. like, wow, this shows me so much about my life. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's so good. Just like keep the fire burning in you and continue to give mm -hmm. what, what makes you burn and what you love. And exactly. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Oh, that was really beautiful. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that. Thank you. <laughs> so what would your typical day look like here in Vienna? My day? Yes. <laughs> Do you have like a job you go to? Or is it just painting and singing? Well, for a start, both no, at the same I, time? Uh, both. <laughs> <laughs> I would say both. Um, you have to sing every day. Doesn't matter. Because it's like if you're sport, if you train for soccer, You do you every day. You have to go training, right? Mm -hmm. So for singing, is kind of the same thing. You have to uh, because it's a muscle. You have to keep on working. Mm -hmm. So every day you have to sing. How every many hours? Oh, depends. Because for singers, part of the studies is singing, and mm -hmm. part of it is the pronunciation, the language, mm -hmm. the translation, the feeling. Because mm -hmm. you cannot sing if you're not singing with feeling. Because then nobody knows what you're doing. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if you're singing Mein Herz. And you're not going to sing Mein Herz. Mein Herz mm -hmm. like, like something stupid. Yeah. Or like <laughs> Du bist mein Lieb. I don't know. And then, uh, but you have to really mean it. Mm -hmm. And people have to be able to feel this. So you have to work on that too. Okay. Everything. So that can be from one hour to two to three to four to five to a whole day okay depending yeah uh, uh, uh. so 
basically I, I like to do sports as well because being strong physically it helps to be strong mentally and at least in That's my case true. and to be strong uh, also feel comfortable being there in the stage and feeling strong with mm -hmm. you with yourself and mm -hmm. comfortable yeah cool nice okay and anxiety <laughs> it helps a lot <laughs> with sports or with with the sports yeah with, with, with sports or with singing okay, okay. Yes, yes, yeah yes. how is it being on stage how is it <gasps> are you are you nervous before it are you do you do you Definitely. feel it do you do you see people <laughs> <laughs> definitely you're nervous Every the people that says that they're not they're lying. Really? I'm pretty sure they're lying because every one of us always gets even a little bit nervous really? before okay. going on stage. Okay. It's like being naked. Because everybody everybody's looking at you. Okay. So it's sort of like that. Even but even if you did it for already for 30 years. Are exactly. You still, still everybody, nervous? even the greatest singers in the world would say that I still get nervous. Okay. And that's what gives you the rush. That's what gives the emotion when you're okay. singing, performing. The adrenaline pumping through you. <laughs> exactly. Okay. <laughs> Damn. But okay. So are you singing at your home in your flat? Or are you, are you going to like university with like a soundproofed wall where you, where you let your heart out and sing? <laughs> I actually, um, I'm sorry, neighbors, but I, I do both. <laughs> I do have a space where I sing, but I also sing yeah. in my home, so I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, is there a moment where you were like, okay, now I've made it. That was my, that was the most rewarding moment in your career so far? Oh, yes. Yes, it's a moment and it's beautiful. It's, but you can, the sad thing is that you can count them because it doesn't happen there often. Really? Okay. Yes, but... When it happens, it's the moment when everything disappears and this reality is not this reality anymore. It's like when you're painting and you get lost in the painting, you just disappear. You okay. just want to keep painting and you're just doing it. Nothing matters but the painting and you. That's it. Wow. That's your reality in that moment. So okay. that's also happens when you're singing and you're giving everything. In that moment, it could be something really beautiful. Okay. Mm -hmm. Very nice. <laughs> so another thing I wanted to ask you is how much of like your personal style of singing flows into the songs you sing or like into your performance? My personal style? Uh, that's kind of complicated because I used to be very emotional mm -hmm. with my um, songs. When I sing popular music, I do still sing with that um a lot of uh, like emotion but the thing with the opera is that you cannot put so much emotion with it because then the instrument gets affected like if you're singing a really sad song and you feel like crying mm -hmm. you cannot cry because then your throat closes oh okay so you That's do have to block yourself a little bit mm -hmm. in some stuff mm -hmm. uh but i would say i like very kind of like um chesty things we put put a lot of chest because mm -hmm. i like to put a lot of chest and um like dark darkened i don't think that's good in the opera but at least <laughs> in the popular yes. yes okay okay yes okay so it's easier to like get your personality in into the pop pop things and not really in the classical music Like I mean, both should be. Uh, I'm st in the opera. I still have to work a little bit through that because I still have to. In the freedom, the freedom that we do have, I want to put more my personality, mm -hmm. and I'm still not at that point. Uh, but with the popular, yeah, you can just sing, and and because you have the basics of the opera, it's even easier. Mm -hmm. So nice. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. so interesting. Okay, cool. So about the you already talked a little bit about the Vienna. Um, local art scene, singer scene, but like, how did you, how do you experience it? Is it like open? Is it easy to get to know people, to grow into it? Okay, well, I've already met some people. You do have to move to talk to people, send uh, your your CV, and send mm -hmm. your videos. For me, it's a little hard with the videos, especially having a 
because my voice is big, so you can't really hear. Um, not big as like mm -hmm. it. It's like when you record it with a microphone, the overtones you cannot hear them really. Mm -hmm. okay. So it's hard for me to send my videos to people because they can't hear my true voice unless they mm -hmm. hear it on person. So that has been a problem, definitely. Mm -hmm. Uh, otherwise, uh, the opportunities are more here. I, mm -hmm. I do have to say that in my country, Mexico, sadly, we do not have so many opportunities as here. Okay. But, mm -hmm. Okay. Nice. So do you always have to send a, a video of you first before they invite you in person? Or do you also sometimes just have to go there? Mostly, yes. They would have to watch a video. Um, and many times you would have to know someone that they know. Uh, so <laughs> not someone who knows, who knows, who knows. Yeah. <laughs> Some people say eighty okay. percent contacts, the rest is talent mm. and study. <laughs> okay. 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 But you have kind of made name for yourself, or you you met some people. I met here. some people, but not yet where I was where I want to be mm -hmm. in the opera, just the opera okay, business. Okay. Uh, but I'm moving and I'm moving more than where I was and I'm getting nice. more contacts. So yeah. things are going, going well. Very, very mm -hmm. nice. Very glad. <laughs> okay. Is there any lesson you've learned on your artistic journey, either like both artists, artistic, like singing and painting or something that you like, well, I'm not doing that one again. <laughs> Well, sure. Like if, if I would talk to myself, uh, I don't know, like five years ago or like some years ago or any person that's starting with this, I would say, don't let the fear interfere in what you're doing. Cause it's so easy to give space for fear when you're doing this kind of things. Cause you you're so vulnerable. Mm -hmm. Every person that decides to go with the artistry, doesn't matter if it's singing or painting. It's about being brave because mm -hmm. you're putting everything out there for the other people to see. And judge. And judge, exactly. So um, just don't be afraid and put yourself there with all your heart. Just give it, give it, and it doesn't matter what, whatever people say about it. Just keep doing your thing feel strong about it, believe in you, because mm -hmm. no one, no one is gonna believe in you if you don't believe in yourself first. So I would work on myself. If I knew this before, I would have worked a hundred percent in me. Mm -hmm. Then if I'm singing this, I'm, I should sing, no, no, no. I should first start about believing in me mm -hmm. and what I have and my mm -hmm. instrument and my, my abilities, my feelings, everything about me. And then, okay. Now mm -hmm. I can share mm -hmm. it. I can do this, but yeah, I would tell that to my younger self. Yeah. Okay. Nice. But it's not only the the public when you like do something and you get comments, but also like teachers. I mean, you studied this, and then you have teachers who sometimes maybe are kind of harsh to you, and who like they are, you're like they are to you like an idol, and they know what they're doing, and they have so much experience, and then they really maybe put you down. As well, you really have to be strong. Exactly. I had some teachers like that. Uh, it's really hard to to be able, because it's like when you're growing up and your mom or your dad tells you, oh, you're too fat, you're eating too much, you do this, you're too ugly or stuff like this. And then these words stick in your head. Mm -hmm. And if your teacher says, oh, you're not good, then you, when you're singing, you will feel, you will hear this voice in your mm -hmm. head. Oh no, but you're not good. And then there is a point where you decide, oh, I do take the comment or I believe in myself mm -hmm. and I take my own comments. Mm -hmm. So that thing, it's that this step, it sounds so easy, but it takes a lot of time, yeah. a lot. So you do have to work hard on that, yeah. on just taking everything, what everybody says and just putting hit it mm -hmm. somewhere mm -hmm. and hear yourso yourself more mm -hmm. okay. yeah, that's a path and mm -hmm. a way to grow definitely a lot of work yes a lot uh, a lot yeah. <laughs> okay 
Um, so, yeah, I mean, we already talked about what you're currently working on. Well, is there, well, we, we talked about your current art project. Is there any current singing project that's coming along? Anything you're working on? Anything in the future that we can look forward to? Yeah, I think um, there will be singing in the summer a couple of operas. Uh, um, and I am auditioning for some competitions as well. Ooh. And we're waiting to see the results. So okay. I'll let you know. Fingers that... crossed, thumbs Yay! pressed. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll see. Very we'll nice. See. Okay. But as I said, I would like to do my own thing at the side mm -hmm. and do painting and singing and mm -hmm. do something different on my own. So Very nice. That's so. my plan. Very cool. Cool. Okay. Um, yeah. So where can the listeners or watchers on YouTube can find out more about you? Where, they, where can they find you? Sure. Sure. Well, um, you can find me on Instagram um, at Luxana, L-U-X-A-N-A dot L-O-Z. Yeah. Luxana is not a Mexican name. It's actually made up. So. Oh. <laughs> So it's <laughs> where does, like why? How does where does it come from? My great grandfather. Oh. He was super Catholic. And he believed uh, there's Virgin of Light. It's a huge deal in Mexico. So La Virgen de la Luz and Light in in um, Latin is Lux. Mm -hmm. So Lux Ana. Mm, and okay. Ana was the mother oh, nice. of the Virgin. So yeah, yeah, Luxan. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. So nice. that's, well, that's, a, that's a nice story. Very interesting. <laughs> interesting. <laughs> Cool. Yes. Well, then thank you so much for being here. Thank, thank you so you. much for sharing all of this. Thank you. Thank you <laughs> it so was much. Really nice. <laughs> okay, then thank you so much for watching and for listening. You can find all of the infos about Luxana down in the description. You can find us on Spotify and YouTube. This was the Voices and Missions podcast. If you like it, please subscribe. If you don't like it, please still subscribe. Maybe the next episode has something for you and support your friendly neighborhood artists. Thank you so much. Yeah.